Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, everything you need to know about local link building. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today and today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive website platform. When we got back from NADA, we were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented sixth year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites, plus FCA announced that we are now an approved vendor. 2017 has been incredible. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have our very own Steve Shackelford as our presenter today. Steve Shackelford is the Search and Social Team Manager at DealerOn, responsible for running the team and contributing to overall SEO strategy. He's been in the SEO arena for over five years, with more than four years spent exclusively in the automotive vertical. His experience across multiple dealer website platforms and gift for analyzing data is integral to the success of the DealerOn SEO team. He's becoming a popular speaker at automotive conferences due to his unique take on local SEO and laid-back presentation style. And he can be reached at sshackelford at dealeron.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at AutoHook are sponsoring this week's webinar giveaway. AutoHook is a showroom traffic driver. They've built the ultimate attribution engine, which tracks that customer through the lead, showroom visit, and purchase, and then delivers a cost per sale that's best in the industry. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a $250 e-gift card from AutoHook. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though. So stay tuned, and who knows, you might be the one walking away with this awesome prize today. And for more information about AutoHook, visit driveautohook.com. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience, and we want to know what you have to say. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealeronWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Steve Shackelford at S.T. Shackelford. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's learn everything you need to know about link building. Mr. Shackelford, how are you, sir? Doing just fine. How about yourself? I'm doing great, and I am so, 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 so excited about this presentation. Local link building, this has become really, really important lately, and it's also one of those things that dealers really aren't doing and if they are doing it, they're not doing it very well. So thank you so much for coming today and presenting this. And I know you have a lot to get to because your slide deck is like 160 slides. So just go. Just tell everyone what we're going to be doing today, and let's let's do this. Excellent. Yeah, real quick, just the objectives that we're going to go through today are how to read and audit your link profile, how to audit your competitor's link profile and the profile of other websites, how to identify new link opportunities, then how to form partnerships and acquire links. We'll talk a little bit about outreach there. Then we'll do our giveaway at the end and then a little bit of question and answer. So got a lot of dealership personnel on here. We may have a few link builders and local SEOs as well. So we're going to start at the top and kind of really, really get in quick here. So let's start with the basics. What is a link? A link is what's wrapped in an A tag in an HTML sense, and that is a reference to data that users can follow by clicking or tapping. Occasionally you can hover as well. Uh, in this occasion, yeah, you can point to external properties, that would be other websites, internal pages on your own website, or specific page sections there. But today we're really just going to focus on those links that point out to other websites. So th these links are commonly known as backlinks or inbound links. And I know what you're thinking, okay, cool, I know all this, but why do these backlinks matter? It's basically because your parents said so. Uh, that's not really the answer. but. Because internet experts say so, and because internet, that is why. 
And so real quick, according to the 2017 local search ranking factors that was just released and it's put together by Darren Shaw this year, it was uh, originally founded in 2008 and been done by David Mim, but now they're doing it in collaboration here. But Greg Gifford is a contributor to this survey as well, uh, our very own. And you can see that for localized organic ranking factors, link signals are actually the number one most important factor. Uh, and then the next most important signal down there would be on-page signals. So last year on-page was number one, that's now been bumped to number two. So cool, got it, it's number one. Still doesn't really answer why those backlinks matter at all to you guys. So search engines are always looking at relationships between websites across the web. And the real rudimentary example of this is to just think of these links as votes. Just like Ronald Reagan won that beautiful election years ago, um, these <laughs> links are votes. So Google looks at the sites that vote for your site in the form of a link, and these votes are weighted. And don't get too worried, I, you know, how are they weighted, oh my gosh. It's pretty basic, just authority, relevance, and quality there. And so Google is full of pretty smart people, so I wouldn't really think about trying to trick them. You could engage in some shady trickery there and some crummy tactics, and we'll kind of talk about a few of those, but really not even touch them. Uh, but let's just break down the weighting. Don't try anything crazy. So let's start with authority. No one knows Google's secret sauce exactly, but we can approximate authority using tools that are available to us. So Moz is an SEO software provider that has tools like Open Site Explorer, and what that enables you to do is to pull a link profile for a given site and then look at core metrics like domain authority. And I know what you're thinking, what is domain authority? It's a metric that is calculated on a 100 point logarithmic scale and it was invented by Moz. It is not a Google metric. And what that means on that scale is that it's just gonna be easier to go from 20 to 30 than it is from 70 to 80. It's not just a sheer numbers game. That doesn't mean, oh, if I get 1,000 links from XYZ websites with relative domain authority 50 and above, then I'm automatically gonna get to 50 and above as well. Not necessarily the case. And so car dealers usually have a domain authority of 25 to 35 just based on their link profile. Domain authority 99 sites when you're looking at your link profiles are going to be your heavy hitters like Facebook, Wikipedia, Google. And as I mentioned, the domain authority metric itself is not a Google metric. It was created. It is calculated by Moz. Don't get too hung up on this stuff, though, because really local relevance does matter a whole, whole lot. And just a simple way to think about that is, big and far away, or small, local, and relevant. Big and far away may not ever lead to local sales at your dealership. So that's awesome if you can, if you're an Austin, Texas dealer, and you get your logo on the personal fan blog of a Cleveland Browns, you know, diehard fan, awesome. He put your logo on his website, that's great. Maybe he's got a lot of authority and lots of people go and read that guy's blog. But you might be more benefited from an actual sales standpoint and a local relevancy standpoint to go from okay, yeah, the Cleveland Browns blog guy was great, but is there a similar blog? Can we, can we pick up on the same kind of stuff that somebody here locally? And it doesn't matter if it's smaller because the local relevance is going to matter. And then we go into link quality. So pretty generic there as well. Moz has spam score and Moz trust to help identify low quality links, but you'll be able to identify these pretty quickly as you're looking at your link export. So if you see a site that's from the Ukraine and has three backlinks to it, and they link out to four million other domains, probably going to be a spam site. So now you're thinking, all right, cool, this is all great and all good and fine, but how do I check all of this cool stuff? I would recommend Moz, Majestic, and Ahrefs. You can search for any one of those, but it's really just Moz.com, Majestic.com, Ahrefs.com there. And what we're going to do is audit links for your sites and other websites. And that actually brings us to our first poll question of the day. Why, yes, it does. All right, audience, we have three poll questions for you, but the first one is on the screen now. We'd love it if you take part in our poll questions. It really helps us out. So here we go. How much time do you currently spend evaluating your link profile every month? Please select one of the following answers. I don't spend any time on it. I spend less than an hour on it. I spend one to two hours on it, two to three hours or heck, I check it every day. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And yes, we have two more poll questions coming in. And Steve, I love where this is going. <laughs> I love how in my head I'm saying, okay, but I don't know what that means. You're like, and you're probably asking what that means. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> it's perfect. 
<laughs> You're doing so good. All right, audience, if you have any questions for Steve Shackelford, don't hold back. Send those questions in. We will be holding probably all those questions until we get to the Q&A session, but we're looking forward to a nice Q&A session with you. All right, votes are still coming in. How much time do you currently spend every month evaluating your link profile? Uh, please select one. I don't spend any time, less than an hour, one to two hours, two to three hours, or I check it every darn day. Um, I don't know. Steve, is, is there a, a right answer to this? Don't say it, but is there a right answer to this? Depends on the size of your website. I've got what I think would be a bare minimum for car dealers, and okay. then stuff like every day may be excessive. But again, depending on the size of your site and how much you're doing, it may work for you. All right, all right. Well, let's see what the audience had to say. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. All right, just so as you know, the majority of today's audience, 47%, almost every, you know, almost half, of everyone says they don't spend any time checking their link profile. Yikes. 29% of today's audience say they spend less than an hour every month doing it. 15% of today's audience say one to two hours. And the remaining 9% said they spend as much as two to three hours doing it. No one said that they check it every day. So dealership, average dealership size, you would recommend how often that they check their link profile? I usually pull it once every two weeks and spend about an hour and a half with it. So right around three hours a month is usually good. Really? Okay. All right, audience. We're going to have another couple poll questions coming your way in a bit. So sit tight, enjoy the rest of this show, and I'll come back in a little bit. All right, Steve, back to you. Excellent. So we just mentioned on that slide before about Moz, Majestic, and Ahrefs there. I could really break down the reports for all three of them, but we're going to focus just on Moz today and their Open Site Explorer report. It's a little bit easier to digest than some of the other ones, and it's also a very approachable paid service. So if you are looking to purchase one of these subscriptions here, I think there's a very low-level Moz account that will get people in the door. So what you're going to do, you're going to go to Open Site Explorer, drop in whatever domain name you're looking to check. If you're checking your own link profile, of course, that would be your domain. And what it's going to give you is just a big data set here. And so I recommend opening that in Excel or Google Sheets and then start sorting. Uh, you should use a little bit of formatting as well there to just help you. And we're going to go through each one of these fields up here and let you know exactly what you're looking at and why you should be formatting these things, what these numbers mean. But real quick, you can see over there, there's that domain authority stuff. And I'm as you recall, I mentioned that most dealers live in that 25 to 35 range. Uh, so just because you see something in red and it's noted as lower than 20 or lower than 25, it's not the end of the world. That just means it's just got a lower domain authority. The ones with higher domain authority, a little bit better there. So let's take a look through what you're going to find in this export. First thing you're going to see up there is the URL field at the top of this table. And all that is, is the web address of the linking page. So what page links back to your website? Where does that link live? Then you get the title field up there. That is just the text value that is in the title tag on that linking page. Then you get the anchor text. So that's going to be the text value associated with the link there. And so you can see sometimes it'll say image alt. You know, so if the A is wrapped around a logo and there is no image alt attribute attached to it, it will say no anchor text, image alt. That kind of thing. So that's why it's really important that when you guys are filling out, you know, if you're putting a sponsor on a page and you're dropping the logo in, make sure to put the alt attribute in there because that may be the only text value associated with that link. It just helps search engines know what's going on there. So that's what we mean by anchor text. Spam score is going to be the metric to measure the risk of penalty. And again, that is a Moz calculated metric, and we'll break down that in just a second here. It is not the ultimate decider. Uh, you're going to still need to look at all of these websites and evaluate. So here's some of the stuff that they look at for spam score signals. And when we go through these, you'll say, oh, man, I think I'm guilty of a lot of these. So link diversity of the domain. If there's a low link diversity, if they only point out to one other website, that's going to be bad. Uh, size of the site and referring domains. So a small site with not a lot of domains coming back to it could trigger the spam signal there. No contact info on the page. So if it's just a website that doesn't have social icons, doesn't have an email address anywhere, that could potentially show up as a spam signal as well. Uh, low number of total pages. Okay. 
kind of sounds like a lot of local sites, don't you think? And there are plenty of dealers that you're working with organizations, you're like, man, this is one of the worst websites I've ever seen. So, so that's why you don't want to use spam score as an ultimate decider. You still want to look at these things and say, okay, even though this thing got a five or this thing got a seven, and we'll go through the number variations here, it's still a good link. So the spam score risk levels essentially break down like this. It is a 17-point scale, and just each flag is one point, basically. So if you've got a low number of pages, that's a point. If you've got a low link diversity, that's a point. So zero to four is low risk. You'll see that kind of indicated there on the formatting. So everything in green is zero to four. Five to seven is going to be your medium risk there. So and not the end of the world, evaluate those because a lot of times you'll see people in that five to seven range that are good. Other times you see five to seven and it'll be very clear to you that, oh, this is just a really thin website with a lot of crummy links. Uh, and then high risk is going to be eight to 17, happy holidays. Uh, and then we're moving on to the page authority field here. So we've moved on from spam score. Uh, page authority, pretty standard. It's just like domain authority and the fact that Ma, it's a Moz calculated number. It's looking at a ton of different things like linking root domain, authority of those linking root domains, total number of referring domains that link to those domains that link to you. So it's just the predictive ranking strength of that page. Domain authority, just like we talked about, predictive ranking strength of the overall domain. Uh, the next field you're going to see up there is the number of linking domains to the page. That's pretty basic. So for whatever individual page we're talking about here, whether it's this blog.localmotors, there's only one other domain that links to that specific page. The next one you'll see there is total number of linking domains to that domain. So local-motors.com has 338 links that go to their entire domain, but only one other link that goes to that specific page. So you can use these to figure out relevant pages within these other websites that you're looking at, what sites are you know, maybe just you got put on an orphaned page somewhere that really never got any love, or it was an event from five years ago or something like that, and it's never going to get another link. So you're like, oh, okay, that's what that is. And you're going to see the origin field. This will say external or internal, just dependent upon the report. So in mods, you could do a crawl of all your internal links as well. They're just going to feel for what pages are getting the most authority. Um, you know, if you've got a trade in your drop down on every single item, what you're essentially letting robots know is that we think this is the most important page from an internal link standpoint. So stuff like that can help you monitor if you're applying too much weight to maybe some pages that really aren't driving a lot of actual revenue for you. Vice versa, if you see that things are extremely underrepresented, go ahead, add internal links to them. Then you're going to see the target URL field. That one is pretty darn important. That's the actual page on your site that's getting the link. And when you're evaluating your link export here, you're going to want to look and see, okay, how many of my internal pages are getting links versus how many links are coming to just my overall domain. And if I'm seeing that I've got some pretty important internal pages that aren't getting links from anywhere, then those need to be assigned a higher priority for you. So you want to look at which pages on your site are actually getting the links. And if there's a more relevant page, reach out to that webmaster and say, hey, you know, you were talking about our service specials and our discounts, but you just linked to our home page. It would be much better for your users and me if you just linked right over to our service special page. So now we need all the links, which means you need to check your competitors' links too and other websites, which brings us to our second poll question of the day. Yes, it does. All right, second poll question is on the screen now. That's right, audience. We need you to use those fingers of yours and tell us the answer to this question. How much time do you currently spend researching your competitors' links each month? I know, last time we asked how much time you spent on your own links, but now we want to know your competitors' links. You ever check those out? Please select one of the following. I don't spend any time, less than an hour, one to two hours, two to three hours, or I check it every day. All right, so once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll, share the results. Steve, you are whipping through this information really fast. Thank you so much. Now, audience, we already got a couple really cool questions in from the audience. There's no possible way you don't have more questions. So send those questions in. We're looking forward to a really nice Q&A session with Steve Shackelford, as you can tell. He's extraordinarily knowledgeable on this subject and SEO in general as well. So uh, throw some stuff at him. Let's see what kind of information he can help you out with. All right. 
All right, my friend. We got almost everyone voting. Audience, you guys are so on point today. Thank you so much. Steve, if you're ready, I'm going to close this poll and share the results. Good to go. We'll do it. Okay. 50%. Half of today's audience say they don't spend any time at all researching their competitors' links. 23%, so almost a quarter, say they spend less than an hour. 10% say one to two hours. And crazy, 18% of today's audience say that they spend two to three hours re researching their competitors' links. I'm pretty sure that um, only 9% of the audience said that they were doing two to three hours on their own links. So I find it very interesting that they said 18% here. And no one has said that they check it every day. Steve, is there a right answer to this? Yeah. It, it depends. I would do probably about at least an hour and a half a month is what I would say on your competitors' links. and just that, would, that should be good, but it depends on how many competitors are cleaning your clock and how many services you offer. So if you're just a Chevy dealer, you've only got to check out maybe a few other Chevy guys and some service competitors. But if you're trying to win for trucks, you're trying to win for window tinting, you're trying to win for specific services like oil change and wheel alignments, it could be a lot more time depending because you're just going to have more competitors for each service. So anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours would be good. All right. All right. Well, we'll come back for a third poll question in a little bit. Until then, I know you have some more awesomeness to share. So keep going, Steve. You're doing great. We'll cruise. All right. So just as I was saying, you're going to need to check your competitors' links and the link profiles for non-competitors. And so what that means is if you're a successful Ford dealer in Dallas and you're kind of burnt out and you're like, man, I can't figure anything else out, well, okay, check out Ford dealers in Chicago. Check out Ford dealers in Los Angeles. Figure it out. Look at the bigger metros. See where they're getting links. See if you can find some patterns there. So what I recommend you do, go run five exports, drop it into a big sheet. Um, set the formatting to show an anchor text value that would include cool words like sponsor, award, vent, et cetera, friend, partners. It, anything like it, local, anything like that. So you've got you know five competitors worth of links in here, and you want to show anywhere where the anchor text is on your competitors links that has something related to sponsorships. Then you've actually got to go check it out. Like okay, there's an award here. How did they win the Hans Molman Buick Award? What do I have to do to win the Hans Molman Buick Award? Can I do something like that? Um, you know, if you're getting one from Kent Brockman Buick GMC Dallas, oh okay, where what are they sponsoring? How are they doing that? Where's the festival? How did they get that? Is it a $500 sponsorship and they got the link? Are they the only sponsor on the page? So it's just a quick way that will help you identify where some of your other sites or your competitor sites are getting sponsor links. Uh, and then you need to start just adding all of these links as a potential opportunity. So open yourself up a new tab in that same sheet and say, here are my potential opportunities. My competitors have these links and they're known as sponsors on these pages. They got this award. They're friends of these people. They're partners with these people. Maybe there's an opportunity for me here, or at the worst, I can at least develop some kind of pattern analysis that says, aha, this is where they're winning here. And what you don't want to do is just mirror these sites completely. So just adding your link in conjunction with their link and say, oh, okay, well, you're sponsoring that art festival. I'm going to sponsor it too. Okay, great. You, you know, kept up with the competition, but you kind of want to crush them like a bug. So you need to figure out how to grab a similar or better link than your competitors. So just start asking yourself these questions. Just did they sponsor an event? And you're going to find out that link profiles are full of, full of links from all kinds of different events. And it's going to be stuff like charity organizations. You're going to find food banks. You're going to find clothing donation. You're going to have disaster relief and shelters. And there's all kinds of ways that you can contribute to these people. And we'll talk about that in just a second here. But you're also going to find youth sports teams. You're going to find organizations that you can sponsor either their entire season. You can sponsor a specific team in a specific league. You can sponsor a specific tournament. You can sponsor specific parts of those tournaments, You know, whether it's a, a hole at a golf tournament, a mile in a 5K or whatever, or a K, sorry, uh, anything like that. There are opportunities out there if you just look at the patterns that other people are utilizing and say, ah, I can do a better job of that. So churches, community centers, religious meeting spots of any kind are always good. And then professional guilds, the weird ones are good too. So everybody's pretty much doing police and fire. Look for random stuff like beatboxers. Um, industry and OEM specific clubs and other random meetup groups are just like prerequisites in my opinion. Like you got to be reaching out to all those people. And your competitors may have already hit them up. 
but just see what they're doing and see maybe you can take the link from them. Like, oh, okay, you know, Hans Molman Chevy was your sponsor last year, and they paid you 300 bucks and gave you donuts and coffee on Saturdays. Uh, are, are you happy with them? Are you looking for anything else? Do you guys need facilities? Are you looking for $500 a year? Do you want donuts, coffee, and kolaches? What are you looking for? Um, so some what? other cheap stuff that you What is a kolache? <laughs> what is a kolache? Well, all right, stay tuned for my next webinar in May about what is a kolache and everything you need to know about it. We'll Wait, talk no, about seriously, that later. I'm in New Jersey. I really don't know what that is. Is, is it a dessert? <laughs> Oh my gosh, people are yelling at me. What do you mean, what is a kolache? (laughs) This is the most shocking thing that's ever happened, I would imagine, on a dealer on Webby. Um, (laughs) All right. We can't stop down right now, guys. We've got slides to get through. We will have to do this. I'm just going to Google it. Fine. You know, answer everyone else's questions, just not mine. It's fine. It's all right. (laughs) Thank you, Kayla. That's totally fine. Kayla says it's a breakfast Mm -hmm. sausage wrapped in dough. It sounds delightful. Uh, Thank you. No, 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 no. Okay, see, that's why we have to do everything you need to know. So it is not just a breakfast sausage. It's not a pig in a blanket. It is not a sausage roll necessarily. That is uh, a colloquialism often uh, applied to the sausage roll. The kolache is conflated there, but really no. It's it's West Texas kolache. These are dessert, savory. It is a traditional thing. Uh, Look it up. Uh, I believe it's Czech Republic or something like that. So they've got the goods. They're the kolache makers. Check them out. Anyway, so art festivals are cheap. Food truck parks aren't always cheap, um, but occasionally they are. And then farmers markets and farms, and we're going to talk about where to provide value, but for each one of these things, trust me, there are ways you guys can provide values. I see it all the time. Northwest, oh, we've got a shuttle, and we let them use our courtesy shuttle to do winery tours each weekend or something like that. Trust me, there are ways that you can add value. Uh, early education and private daycare, I have a lot more success with than those big .edu links. Uh, there are ways the big .edu's can still work, but Link builders have kind of abused those channels, so I don't really go after the scholarship stuff. Um, so time to put on your brainstorming cap. We're going to think outside the box a little bit for acquisition here. And as I briefly mentioned through that stuff, we're going to identify where you guys can add value. And the ways and means are going to vary, so you have to be open to interesting ideas. And quick, I'm going to talk about just link building tactics for local that I think are going to work long term partnerships and adding real value. I would say you should probably spend 80% of your time looking at partnerships and adding real value. The next one, citation, building on relevant sites. We're really not going to talk too much about citations here, but that is something that, as part of your link efforts, of course, just do that as well. Make sure that you're building citations on relevant sites. Um, Discount and coupon sites still work really, really well, and that's something that is extremely relevant. You guys have new coupons all the time. You guys have new discounts all the time. You've got rebates all the time. Find every discount and coupon site you can out there. Uh, Tactics that work long-term, another one, finding unlinked mentions. This will always occur. So you always need to monitor these and set up Google Alerts. You can use Moz as tool. There's tons of ways to look for unlinked mentions of your brand name. But just people are going to write about you, whatever you're doing in the community, whatever you're doing naturally, they're going to write about you. Get an alert set up. If somebody talked about you, make sure you're getting a link for it. And then, of course, creating useful local content. Again, I could do two hours on creating useful local content for each one of your services there, history about the street that you're located on, Done. traffic statistics on the street, Done. potholes. Next yeah. webinar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next webinar, because I know a lot of dealers, when I was just a digital dealer, <laughs> they wanted to know more about content and ideas for content. And done. I'm booking you. <laughs> oh, I got the goods, baby. I, <laughs> I got you this. do. If anyone has it, you do. <laughs> I got this. Um, so the useful content, the key on that is to just look at untapped stuff. Like do, and again, I'm going to go on a little tangent. If TripAdvisor already has a list of the top five bars in town, if, if all these things are already represented, please don't go write that exact same thing again. Look at something that's relevant to your dealership. Like I said, history of the street, um, pothole notifications, anything like that that's really cool. And you say, hey, this is relevant. It's local. It's something that's, you know, kind of around our industry, we can talk to local people, create useful content that isn't designed to just sell cars necessarily, but that's going to pick up links and that's a good long-term strategy. Tactics that I don't think are going to work long-term but can definitely get you links, and this is more for the link builders that are out there and just get stuck sometimes maybe with a dealer who doesn't say yes to a lot of things, Uh, Wi-Fi lists, scholarships, alumni links, all these kinds of thin things that aren't really niche specific or even super relevant to your dealership, 
get them if you just want to have link volume. And if all of your competitors you're seeing, oh man, well, all my competitors, you know, 70% of their profile is Wi-Fi lists. Okay, go there just to keep up with them, but don't feel like that's a tactic that you need to be investing large amounts of time and to get on all of these rando little sites. And the scholarship and alumni thing, same kind of deal. People have just abused them so much. So a $500 scholarship on a scholarships page that has a thousand links on it really isn't going to do as much. If you're trying to get those big .edu ones, even the alumni ones don't work anymore. I like course syllabus links are kind of my favorite ones for the .edu. So if you can work out something with your local community college and say, I know you've got an automotive technology class or an auto shop class of some kind, can you guys use our facilities for not necessarily field trips, these are college kids, but use the facilities two Saturdays during the semester. And I've seen this work on some bigger auto groups that are willing to do this and you know they've got big alumni that went there. That's a good way to get a syllabus link or sorry, you know, like a, a course calendar link every semester there that'll get added and usually it's going to be on a page dedicated to that specific course it's not going to be just a link that's on a .edu site with a scholarship page that has a thousand other scholarships listed from you know rando car dealers that have all pitched in 500 bucks for the you know Hans Molman Buick fund that kind of thing uh, another one yeah just like I was saying citation building purely for volume if you've got to do it to add volume go right ahead but I don't think that long term that's going to move the needle for you so little stuff that's easy and super hyper local and relevant, neighborhood watch groups, one of my favorites. Uh, they have lonely webmasters. And one thing you can do is just offer a free oil change to the watch captain. Hey, that guy that's got to drive around all the time, or if they have a courtesy car that they let everybody drive, free oil change for that car. Anything you need for that car, we'll take care of the service for it. All you guys have to do is give us a nice juicy link there on your website. Hey, homepage would be great since you've barely gotten the other web pages, but whatever page you need to. So some, some communities and developments, they have neighborhood watch groups, some have homeowners associations, sometimes they're the exact same thing, sometimes they're two separate websites. So yard of the month, it could be a different thing. Give them a free car wash. They did so much to work hard for that yard of the month thing, and usually those people that have money to spend on landscaping may have disposable income to spend at your dealership as well. Uh, so this one's coming up here. Lots of people at the end of May are going to be doing field days. This is where I have success with daycare centers and private schools. A lot of these guys have individual websites for each one of their locations. They're not yet running through a big corporate website. Uh, some of the franchise ones do, but the littler private schools and the daycare centers still run this stuff. And they're going to do a field day. They're going to do something. You don't have to give them straight cash, homie. Just donate something. Say, hey, I know you're going to do a watermelon smash every year. My kid went to school there you know, three years ago, and I remember the watermelon smash was awesome. You know, Put yourself as part of something fun there. You're going to get a link. They're going to talk about it. You drive over to the field day and put up a little banner. They're happy about it. it makes them look legit. You guys look legit, and you get a link out of it. Uh, so you know, use your employees here to network, and we're going to talk about outreach in just a second here. It's going to help you. Like if you have a contact there, if you know that one of your employees drops their kid off at school there, you don't need to go cold call the webmaster at info at, you know, kentbrocklescenesdaycare.com, that kind of stuff. And really, those people, real people, real car buyers, try to get in with those kinds of organizations. So the car clubs, the OEM specific clubs, like I said, that is kind of a prerequisite in my opinion. The Corvette clubs, the Love Bug meetups, you guys got to be talking to these guys. They like donuts, they like coffee, they like towels, and you're going to want to use search operators for help finding some of these things. So the in URL is very helpful, in anchor, in title, in text, also very helpful. And what that's going to enable you to do is just go into Google search and say, okay, show me in the URL, show me anything that says sponsors, and it's got to be in Dallas, it's got to also include the word school in it somewhere on the website. Uh, and you're going to say, oh, okay, well, there's a Dallas International School, and there's a sponsors page. Cool, awesome. Uh, real quick, you see Frisco Family Services seeks back-to-school sponsors. Oh, cool, man, there's one that's seeking sponsors. Outstanding. Um, so this is where you go OEM-specific. Hey, in URL sponsors Dallas and Chevy. You'll see sponsors for the late, great Chevys of Dallas right there. That's a local Dallas group. It's a Chevy meetup. If you're a Chevy dealer, I would definitely be talking to them. And then other times you're going to find stuff like, oh, sponsors Dallas and Trucks. Let me find something cool here. And we've got, oh, the food truck of Palooza. Outstanding. It's easy, right? Wrong. So <laughs> Wait, let's take a look at food truck Palooza. You just made it sound so easy. It's not easy. <laughs> I did. That's right. It's so easy, right? You find them and then you just get them, right? Like it's so easy to get. It's just so easy. Um, okay, so let's check out the old food truck of Palooza. Okay. 
it looks a little bit promising, but I'm seeing quite a few sponsors listed down there. So it may look like a little bit of money. Uh, these are their 2016 sponsors. So you know it's an annual event it's coming up. It's fifth annual right there. So it's going to come, come back again in October so we can get ahead of it. Um, but wait a minute. I'm hovering over stuff. And are those logos even linked to? Nope. Not a one. So there are, I believe there's 12 logos in total at the bottom here. I didn't get all of them in the screenshot there. So let's go take that URL, DallasFoodTruckPalooza.com, and I opened up Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog is a web crawler. Uh, there is a free version that you can download and do stuff like this. It's great to use it. It is an awesome product. Uh, but we took this URL, DallasFoodTruckPalooza.com, sponsors.html, and just said, okay, well, I'm not seeing any links coming out of this site. None of these logos are linked. Maybe I'm missing it on the hover. I don't really feel like looking at all the page source right now and going through and pulling it, you know, doing control F's for A's. So let's just drop it into Screaming Frog real quick. And you can see that, oh, no, after I clicked on the URL and looked at the outlinks down there at the bottom, that they're really only linking out to two other websites on their sponsors page here. That's pretty nuts. And so that would immediately put it as a low probability of acquisition. And the only two links that they're going out to are the ones up there on the header. You can kind of see the guns and hoses and then the lifttexas.org that they went to is right below that there. So right there, you found an opportunity. You've identified an opportunity, but you can quickly weed out these opportunities because there's a very low probability of acquisition. So even when you're finding stuff, that's what sometimes can be frustrating. You just got to weed this stuff out. And that's why you have to manually evaluate all of them. So now let's think about where the future car buyers are. Where are they? Oh, you know where they are. They're at Driver's Ed. This is one of my favorites. Um, so Driver's Ed education places, you can give them a used car. They won't hate it. Uh, they will actually like that quite a bit. And you can slap a branded license plate on there, or give them some jacked up truck with mud flaps. Heck, you could probably skin it out in your dealership stuff if you want to. They'll take the car. And hey, why don't you drop by and maybe send them some specials, posters, flyers, if there's a new driver program, maybe some kind of course that you guys are willing to offer. Oh, okay, maybe their parents are going to come in and now you've got the kids begging the parents to take them to this new driver course where they're going to get $5,000 off or not $5,000 off, but you know, get some rebate that they qualify for if they go to this course, something like that. And then you guys have facilities. Everybody here has facilities. I like to use it for appreciation. Those, so those are more like events that you host. If you guys are willing to host events at your facilities like a silent auction, art gallery, there is some more liability to that because you start working with an organization and then they get to use your facility. But if it's an event that you can kind of host on your own there, it's a good way to pick up some links. And what I like to do is just look for organizations that are just a little bit underappreciated but that usually all have websites. So teachers are great. Not a lot of teachers have their own individual websites, though. Um, and the union, the teachers' union stuff, not that great. And there's a lot of teachers' appreciation. So the likelihood of getting news stories about it, eh, a little low. But you could certainly do it. Uh, but hey, web professional appreciation day, I wouldn't hate it. I like donuts, coffees, and kolaches. Come on, man, hook <laughs> it up. Um, so photographer appreciation day is another good one. Uh, you know, just say, hey, if, if you're a photographer, if you own a photography company, if you're just a freelance photographer, come on by. We're doing something from noon to five. Obviously, we're just giving out, you know, free sandwiches and stuff like that. And we've got a photo display from, you know, you hook up with Nikon or something and have one of their people out and say, we've got somebody from Will Wolf Camera on Mockingbird Lane over here, and he's going to show you the new Nikon whatever. You know, so you get a product demo up, you work with another organization like that, and you know that these photographers usually have their own websites. They're probably going to shoot something around there. You're not charging them anything. You're just providing them a little bit of value. They get to check out a new product, get some free food at the same time. And then find the weird ones like Ultimate Frisbee Appreciation Day. You wouldn't think that these guys have websites with those weird random kickball leagues and all that kind of crap. Somebody will set up a website for them. They think it's real cool and real funny. So anything like that's good. Reach out to them. It's a good idea. Uh, and really, it is just all about finding ways to provide legitimate value to these sites or groups. That's really the only thing that I would use as a foundation. If we're talking long-term tactics, do that. Which brings us to our next poll question of the day. Last poll question of the day on the screen now. So think back to your current website right now. We want to know how many local organizations with websites do you currently work with? Please select one of the following. Do you think it's none? Do you think maybe either you're just not working with any local organizations just yet, or those local organizations don't have a website? Okay, well, that's an answer. Less than three, three to 10, 
10 to 20 or do you work with more than 20 local organizations? Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. Looking for more questions from our very smart audience today for Steve Shackelford. We're getting very close to the Q&A session. So get those questions in. Looking forward to them. The few that we have in here are really, really good. <laughs> um, by the way, I wanted to share with you. I did look up kolaches. <laughs> okay, it makes sense to me now because I looked it up on Wikipedia, by the way. And no, mm -hmm. I've never, ever heard that term before. But um, uh, the kolache has uh, fruit in the middle of it, but there is ones with meat fillings, and technically they're yep. not kolaches, they're klabaznikis. <laughs> Uh, that's right. They do have a different name. You are correct. The savory ones do have a more technical term for them. Yes. But but they're all called kolaches, right? And here's where it gets interesting because, Steve, I know you're in Texas. So um, apparently uh, huh? they came to the United States when the Czech immigrants uh, settled in West Texas. Texas. That's, right. that's right. So that's why yeah, maybe so I haven't heard of them because I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, if you're a good Texan like me, a good native Texan, you'd know about the Czech stop in West Texas, right in between Austin and Dallas. Beautiful 35 facilities. Outstanding stuff. <laughs> well, I learned a lot about local link building and about desserts. So there we go. All right. So the votes are coming in nice and fast. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. We really appreciate it. Let's close this poll and share the results. Oh, very interesting. 5% of today's audience said none. 27% of today's audience, so a, a large portion of today's audience, say they have less than three local organizations with websites that they currently work with. The majority, however, 35% said they work with three to 10 organizations. Now, almost a quarter of today's audience, 24%, said they work with 10 to 20 organizations. And then we have this elite 8% of today's audience who say they work with more than 20 different organizations who all have websites. So, all right, so I, I guess I'm going to ask, if you were to recommend a good number of organizations that dealerships should work with, what's a good number? As many as you can provide legitimate value to. So if you're not providing legitimate value to them and you're just trying to get a link out of them, no need to work with them. But if you can provide value, as many as possible. So it may be 50, it may be 150. You know, if your shuttle can drive to 120 wineries in a day and you're in Washington State, do it and hook up with 120 wineries because you can make it work. But if you can't and you don't have, you know, the available resources for that kind of stuff and it caps out at 50 where you can provide legitimate value, then it's 50. So it's really just wherever you can provide value, that's what the number's dependent on. Okay, and I just want to make sure I understand. The This is a more is better kind of thing, though, right? Yep, I would say so. Um, because these are just opportunities that a lot of times have been untapped. I said that daycare center, that private school or whatever, they're not getting hit up by a lot of people. You're not currently working with them. So if you can provide value somewhere, and you get a link out of it, that's a good partnership to make. So the more, the better. Okay, let's keep going. I think we're in the home stretch that's now, right. aren't we? We are, that's right. We're gonna quick, just quickly talk about local link outreach because really you just wanna use the best method for the source. And I know that kind of seems crummy where you're like, well, just use the best social media channel for you, but that really is it. Um, if they seem to be responding to email and their email is very clearly notated on their website, seems like they're responsive, great, use it. If there's a contact form that seems very, very prominent and it seems like they're going to respond, use it. If you see that they're on social all the time, they're engaging with their audience, they're talking about you know, the art festival that's coming up, or they're talking about how they're struggling to find somebody to, you know, just drive them around on the weekends and get them up to wineries because they're having a problem with Uber in that area or something, hit them up on social. Uh, if phone looks good, great. If, if you know somebody at the dealership that drops their kid off at daycare there, use your network. Go in person. Figure something out like that. Uh, but the best thing for the outreach is to just keep it short and sweet. The too long don't read stuff is never going to work. If it looks like it's a form email that just comes and you've sent it to 100 different people, that's not going to help you. Um, 
And then you just need to find out if their needs coincide with the value that you can provide. And that's where I said you may hit a cap where you're like, well, we just can't provide any more value. We don't have the resources to do this. So even though you need somebody to drive 50 people home that are drunk at midnight, we don't have the resources to do that. Sorry. So I know we could get a link there, just not going to be able to make it work. So if their needs coincide with the value that you can provide, then there's probably a pretty good opportunity to get a link here. Uh, but one thing I would say is that you don't need to mention a link up front. Again, you're going to be weeding out those potentially bad opportunities when you're doing this, you know, checking out that food truck Palooza site. And you're like, okay, I'm not even going to reach out to these guys, but I don't need to mention a link up front with anybody I've vetted because it looks like they're pretty good. It looks like they link out to people consistently. It looks like if you are working with them that you're going to get a link. So just focus on the value that you can provide and then mention a link in maybe conversation two or at the very end of conversation one. Really just focus on where you can add value. Uh, and then for the car dealers out there, take chances. Don't say no to everything because somebody may come to you and say, hey, we should sponsor the watermelon smash at my kid's field day. And you say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But really, it's, it's not the dumbest thing you've ever heard. If it gets you a link, if it builds brand awareness. Uh, and none of these things is a blitz. You have to constantly be identifying new opportunities. You don't just do a bunch of stuff for three months and then stop. You don't just say, I've got to beat my competitor by the end of Q3, so I'm going to go add a 1,000 links and sponsor everybody in town, and then I'm not going to do anything again in 2018 and 2019. Don't do that. So pull your link exports every month at the very least. As I said, I usually recommend once every two weeks, but very month at the least. Uh, verify that your new partners have added links, and then look for randos. Uh, so if you started working with people and you're like, oh, okay, I've been working with you for two months. Uh, I keep pulling my link export and I'm not seeing that link added here. I went to your website. I saw that you added my logo and didn't link it. Stuff like that can just slip through the cracks if you're not monitoring it. So just verify that it's there. And a quick note that we did not talk about today, um, if you want to do cool stuff like kiss a Kia or big national stuff, that will get you high domain authority local and long local links. But that is a story for another day about marketing because we were really just focused on the local aspect here today. But that Kiss a Kia story is awesome. I had to throw it in. They picked up tons of links at Southwest Kia, who is also here in Texas. They're down in Round Rock. Uh, but stuff like that, if you're willing to do it, market it right. Come up with a cool twist on it like anybody can give away a car. But they ran the Kiss a Kia contest. It's old school. It's sitcom -y, but it worked. So do that kind of stuff. It helps you out. So for suggested resources, I would say moz.com, majestic.com, ahrefs.com, and of course, dealeron.com forward slash blog. Our own Greg Gifford does a lot of stuff where he's going to talk about local link building. He's going to talk about everything you need to do for local SEO because even though it is the most number one important signal now, it is not the only signal. So Q&A, what do we got? Oh, we have so much. All right, hold on. I'm trying to fix something here. I saw the Kiss Akia on my local station. Oh, I have no idea. What is, what is the Kiss Akia? You go and you kiss Oh, Akia? I can't remember the exact amount of time they made them do it, if it was 24 hours or 36 hours or something like that. Um, but essentially, you know, people enter into a contest and say, I want to have the opportunity to come in and buy for this free car that you're going to give away. And so they select 20 or 30 people and they all come and make them put their lips right up on that Kia. And then the only, you know, chronically unemployed people that don't have jobs to go to or anything else like that can sit there and kiss it for 36 hours at a time. Uh, oh. So they win a free car. And that's what they did. But it oh. got a lot of play, a lot of, a lot of radio it. promotion. Got it. Got it. Like okay. That. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. Because Stephanie wrote in, Hawaii has a hands-on challenge with a Kia Soul. And now I've seen that. I've never yep. seen one where you have to put your yep. lips on it. But I have seen one where you can't <laughs> take your hand off of it. Got it. Okay. Right. Same kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's And those funny. work great. Again. Even though they're sick, commie, if you market it right, if it's at the right time when there's not a lot going on, that kind of stuff can spread and you'll pick up a lot of links. And, and they said they'd seen the hand on before. They're like, let's just do the kiss a Kia. Let's do it. It's great. <laughs> I love it. All right. We got some great questions for you, my friend. So sit tight. Take a drink of water. Let me talk to the audience for a little bit. All right, audience. Sure. We have a few things to discuss with you, my friends. Hi, everyone. Um, first thing is get your questions in. I know he threw a lot of information out there today, but I know you have a couple questions out there. 
wrangling around in that brain of yours. So send those questions in. Let's see if we can't get them answered for you. Before we go any further, I do want to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. In that handout section, you will find Steve's slide deck available for immediate download, and you can have that slide deck until the end of this broadcast. So if you like all the cool things that it had to say in there, yeah, get it. It's in the handouts section. Look for where it says handouts. Click on the little triangle next to the word handouts, and then you'll be able to download that in no time at all. But before we go any further, Steve, are you ready for this? You can turn on your webcam, my friend. I am ready. There we go. Uh, sorry, All right. I apologize. Sorry. No, I apologize. You did good. All right. Audience, it's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends at Autohook are sponsoring this week's webinar giveaway. Autohook is a showroom traffic driver, and they've built the ultimate attribution engine, which tracks the customer through the lead, showroom visit, and purchase, and then delivers a cost per sale best in the industry. One of you lucky webinar attendees, yeah, you're going to win a $250 e-gift card from our good friends at Autohook. All you have to do is be the first person who answers our giveaway question, and that's it. You are there. Now, if you are a vendor, we're going to ask you to kindly sit this one out. We always love having you on our show, but this prize is intended for dealership personnel only. All right, everyone. <laughs> People are writing the strangest things to me. All right. All right, everyone. Here we go. Good luck. It's not an easy question, so I hope you guys are paying attention. All right, here we go. <clears throat> According to the 2017 local search ranking factors, link signals are the number one ranking factor. What is the number two local search ranking factor? Oh, no. Um, hey, Steve, I need a judgment call on this. Uh, do we need, like, the whole thing, like, all three syllables, or is just like the first two syllables okay? Two syllables would be fine. Oh, yeah? Okay, then I would have to give it to Kayla Rath, who wrote in on page. We were looking for on page signals. So congratulations, Kayla Rath. Not the first time you have won on my show, little missy, but congratulations, Kayla Rath. Now it's official. Now, Kayla, you have to write on in and let me know what dealer should be from because <laughs> I do not have that memorized yet. Uh, oh, she's with Rath Auto Resources. <laughs> wow. And by the way, David Sharp wrote in, I think my answer, awesomeness, was really the best answer. So, I, you know, I will take that under advisement next time, Sharpie. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> yes, the answer was on page signals. All right, Kayla, I think we're going to need, uh, oh, I don't think I need anything from you. But thank you for letting me know you're with Rath Auto Resources. You're going to be getting your prize not too much longer after this webinar concludes from our good friends over at Autohook. Now, for everyone else, yes, we had one really great prize today. But you know what? We give away cool prizes every week. So you didn't win today. So what? You know what? Come on back to another Dealer on Webinar. And who knows? That might be the day that you win a cool prize on a Dealer on Webinar. But for right now, yes, we're going to congratulate Kayla Rath. And, of course, we've got to thank our good friends at Autohook for their incredible generosity. And for more information about Autohook, you can check out driveautohook.com. <laughs> Oh, gosh. All right. I love the nice things that my audience says to me. This, uh, David wrote in, everyone's a winner when they get to hang out with you, Eliana. Oh, see, now I'm blushing. All right. <laughs> Shackelford, you ready to drop more knowledge on the peoples? Sure. Let's go at it. Let's do it. All right. First question came in from Curtis. Curtis says, can you get these reports from an Alexa subscription? I, of course, didn't know what he was talking about, so I wrote back and I said, what reports, Curtis? And he said, this inbound link breakdown showing spam score, domain authority, etc. Domain authority and spam score are both Moz-specific metrics, so I would recommend going with Moz on those if you want that kind of report. Okay, Curtis, thank you so much. Next one <laughs> comes in from AJ. He just wanted you to know that this is the stuff that he shouts about all the time to other dealers, and he needs to keep studying it, and you can never know too much. So audience, you heard it from AJ Meta. Keep studying this local link building stuff. It's 
it's very important. All right, next question is from today's winner, Kayla. She says, do you search for sponsor award event on the Open Site Explorer or Moz or a different Moz tool? You can do both. So there is a section in OSC called Advanced Open Site Explorer Reports where you can put in those anchor text values for you. But oftentimes I'll just do the exports as standard exports and then go into Excel and do conditional formatting and just say, okay, highlight any one of these cells in anchor text that has any number of words. That way I can do it after the fact and it's not built into the initial advanced Open Site Explorer report. But there is a spot in Moz where you could only look for links that include XYZ keywords or, sorry, XYZ anchor text words. Same thing, you could exclude certain anchor text keywords. So if you don't want to see anything that has careers, for example, like I don't care about their job site links, you could remove anything from from the same kind of category there. So stuff like that, super helpful in just analyzing the data a little bit more and drilling into what you're looking for. So Excel is where I recommend it, but it is possible in Moz. Ah, okay. Kayla, I know you have a follow-up question a little bit later on, so we'll be getting to that soon. But if you have a follow-up question specifically on this subject, you know, we'd love to hear from you. All right, next question. Uh, okay, I just want to bring this up. Stephanie wrote in, sharing is caring. And it got me to thinking, if somebody comes to our dealership and says, hey, I want to, you know, have a backlink to your dealership. So the tables are turning, right? Is there anyone that you would say we should say no to? Uh, so somebody's just, like an, another car dealer, like car dealer to car dealer link swapping? I don't think another car dealer I mean, would you, do it. But like if that, I mean, you a gentleman's <laughs> club came over and said, hey, oh, can we back oh, link oh, to you? Oh. Is, there any, is there anyone, should you just say yes to everyone who comes and asks us at dealerships to, it, to link, back link? Vet, vet them all first. Uh, and make sure it aligns with your just your brand's philosophy. So, for example, if if the owner of your dealership is a recovering alcoholic, it may not be the best for you to start reaching out to bars and clubs to try to get your link put there. He may see that as a big rub. So if somebody like that comes through, watch out, make sure, vet it. But I would say there's nothing seedy about a gentleman's club necessarily if you're providing legitimate local value. As long as it's local, it should be good. Now, Russian bride that you order from a mail order site, I would not take those links, but there's nothing too hard locally that I would say completely stay away from unless it just conflicts with your brand because, again, they are real people. Uh, you know, it's not like it's just robots searching on that gentleman club's website. I don't know why they would have a website, honestly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but there are real people that would potentially visit them. Um, so nothing you need to just hard and fast stay away from. Evaluate it. Check it out. There's no industry specific. All right. Because Stephanie wrote in and she says, yes, vet them all. Amen. She said, car dealer to car dealer links would look good, wouldn't they? I, I guess. But you're really not going to get much return out of it. And you know? it's, it's kind of <laughs> okay. diminishing returns. So like, if you just want it for volume, fine. But that's why I said, like, I wouldn't really do anything purely for volume, just for volume's sake. Like, if it's value and, like, oh, hey, well, I always send my old cargo vans over to Kent Brockman Ford. Oh, okay, well, then this makes sense. This link is relevant. But just having it there buried somewhere on the site so that we both got an extra link in our profile, right. useless. Useless? Okay. Because um, Stephanie wrote in, not for volume, for auto industry's sake. Like, changing public perception, playing nice, and collaborating looks amazing to the public. The public opinion of car dealers is kind of yucky yucky. So, <laughs> Right, exactly. So if you're highlighting certain things and you say, hey, you know, our friends over at Bob Thomas Ford just did tornado relief for the recent events here in Texas. Something like that is perfectly fine, and that does show goodwill. Uh, but I was saying, if, if you and your buddy are just like, man, somebody told me to do link building and I've got to figure out where the heck to get these links. How about I give you one on my careers page, you give me one on your careers page and we're link building. Stuff like that, I don't think. <laughs> don't, don't waste your time. You okay, know. not for nothing, but your southern accent, oh yeah, that's, that's hot. Oh baby, All right. I got it, I got it going. I can slip into it any time. <laughs> okay, by the way, Stephanie followed up, she said your accent was spot on, by the way. Uh, she followed up with, Steve, seriously, this was awesome and super informative, and I learned so much, especially on the IT and the techie side, so thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Stephanie. Great, great stuff right there. Okay, 
Let's go up to... <laughs> AJ said, is there a Polish neighborhood nearby? No. Okay, Kayla. We hear from Kayla again. She says, how do we keep track of unlinked mentions? If someone doesn't link back to us, how do we politely ask them to put a link without seeming pushy or something? It is tricky, and certain news sites aren't going to do it. Like, if they were a traditional newspaper for years, a lot of times they're going to write the text for, I don't know why, but they still write it for print and then they'll move it over to their website version. So if a link wasn't present there, a lot of times they don't just put it in by default. So it will seem a little bit pushy, but all you're saying is that you just want to help people more clearly navigate to what that article is referencing. So if you were the Kiss a Kia guy and everybody's just talking about Southwest Kia, Southwest Kia this, and nobody ever linked to it, I would say, hey, you know, we built a blog post about this Kiss a Kia event you don't have to just post the news article. You could link right to it, and people could get an entirely more detailed breakdown of what's going on here. So that's, again, where you would try to provide some value and say, hey, look, I saw that you guys wrote about us. Thanks for writing about the Southwest Kia Kiss a Kia contest. That is awesome. We actually did a post about it as well, and since you mentioned Southwest Kia, it would be great if you included a link. And a lot of times they're not going to say yes, and you may have to follow up on, that's where I'd say, use the best channel. So if you see that that author of that post just shared that post on Twitter, slide into those DMs, hit her up, and say, hey, what's going on? I saw you just tweeted that. That's so awesome. Uh, we were going to tweet that same thing, but it would be so sweet if we could get that link over to our page there as well because it would just help you, helps us, helps your users just in case they want to learn more. And that website's going to say, eh, well, if they want to learn more, I want to show them that stuff at the bottom of the site that says other stories you might like. But we want people going there. So... It's just a balancing act. Reach out to them, let them know, and kind of spin it as to why you're trying to provide values to their users, and you should be good. But to monitor them, Moz has a tool inside of OpenSight Explorer called Unlinked Mentions. It's its own tab right there. You can pop in any variation of your name, and it'll pop up. But also Google Alerts work just fine, alerts like that. If you see something, just go check it out. Make sure you got a link. Oh, okay. So fun, Oh, we got some more questions from Kayla, so don't go too far, but sure. Kayla followed up with this question. She says, so, with photographer and ultimate Frisbee day at the dealership, etc., how do we get a link from the photographers or Frisbee enthusiasts that show up for free sandwiches specifically? Or are we wanting an event link from the local places that publish events that are happening? That's where you get both. That's why I would say try to coincide there. So if you're the only guy in town doing a photographer appreciation day, then and 100 people show up, okay, maybe you only get a link back for two of those guys on their gallery because they're the ones who brought their photo that day. They took some shots of the dealership. They had a good time and went and uploaded it to their personal website. But what you're also going to get is those event posts for people that are saying, oh, okay, there's an event going on. And then any niche-specific site, like if there's like a local photography blog, they'll probably talk about it there as well. So that's why you're kind of going for all three there. You're going for the people that come into the dealership for the event. You want them on the back end. That's why Teacher's Appreciation Day, eh, maybe not so good because other people are doing it too, and they don't have their own individual websites. So you're looking for those people. You're looking for the event sites that are also going to post about an event, and then you're looking for just new sites that might talk about it, anything else like that, or the niche-specific photography blog that's going to say, hey, there's this Appreciation Day going on. Check it out, and you've got a blog post on your website they can link directly to there. So now you're building pages or building links to internal pages and you're picking up links from just multiple different sources. They're all built around that one event. So it's a, you get more links for less effort when you do it that way than trying to go hound somebody to go keep adding stuff to a free Wi-Fi list. Just not going to work. All right. Thank you so much. Kayla? I know you have another follow-up question for me. So uh, thank you. You're coming up with some really, really wonderful questions. And Steve, you are hitting it out of the park with your answer, so thank you so much. Okay, next question comes in from AJ. He says, well, remember when I said, so this is a more is better kind of thing? So AJ followed up with, okay, more is better, but it still needs to be local or relevant, correct? More that is be better, but links correct. need to be local or relevant, correct? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, if you're trying to actually, I don't know, sell cars at some point in time, because all of these things are brand awareness. It's long-term entity stuff here where you're like, okay, they saw me at my kid's field day when we sponsored the watermelon smash or whatever. So that's going to do a lot better than, like I said, if you're in Austin, Texas, and you're Southwest Kia, 
okay, great, that Cleveland Browns blogger talked about it, great for domain authority, great for the link authority of the overall domain, but none of those people that are probably reading that Cleveland Browns blogger are ever, not in 10 years, not in 20 years, ever going to come buy a car from me. So that's where I would lean towards more of the local links and building those partnerships because I think that's going to have a much bigger effect and a better impact on the dealership at large over the long term. So that's all. Oh, is that all? Okay, so AJ, do you have a follow-up question? We would love to know. Um, by the way, AJ says, what is the best strategy to get a backlink for a Kalachi Czech bakery? <laughs> and that comes in from <laughs> Greg Gifford fanboy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, okay. Man. Um, and, and David wrote in that he would love to have me as an honorary Texan. Love that. That's right. We'll take you. We'll Love take to you. Be an honorary now, you won't get Is the native Texan license plate. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We've, we've toned that down a little bit. <laughs> uh, so we contributed to the ozone layer going I'm, away, so I'm our hands have been it, taken it down. It can never be too big, all right? <laughs> all right. Okay. That's right. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, John wrote in, Awesome information today, Steve. Didn't know much about links before, but I now feel confident to get started. Thank you so much, John. All right, love this question from Corey, and I don't know what the answer is, so I'm looking forward to your answer on this one, Steve. He says, sure. why are .edu links so valuable? Uh, honestly, it, I mean, they're usually high authority websites because you'd imagine it would be a major college in your area. But .edu links aren't as valuable as they used to be, mainly because there's only so many spots on the website that you can get links. So scholarship pages, you can get links, and what do you know, on those pages there's usually like a thousand other websites there. So the value of them is really not that high with a thousand other people there, so you get kind of diminishing returns. But .org, .edu links are powerful because they get a lot of links just inherently because people are always going to link to that college. If you went to SMU, you're going to link there. All the job boards, everything related to it, they're going to be good. But as it, there's really not that many places on the websites to get links from .edu sites. That's why I look for course-specific stuff that I know is going to get updated all the time and is never going to get inundated with way too many links, or especially not way too many external links. So if you've got a page on the website for the local community college about that auto body class, and it says, hey, by the way, two times a semester we go over to Kent Brockman Service Station and work on you know, Chevy's, Ford's, Dodge, something like that. And the Kent Brockman Service Station is what gets the link there on that specific page. I like those types of links. So they're just important mainly because .edu likes, .edu links are super local if they're at your local college, and they usually have a pretty high domain authority based on the other sites that link to them. So that's why. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. We have a lot of stuff that came in. Okay. Um, this one... Uh, okay, Mark wrote in, does Google see any of these as paid links? But I don't know exactly what Mark was no. speaking about. Not necessarily, because you're paying with sponsorship, but that's not necessarily a paid link. It's not like you went to a paid link service and said, hey, can I give you 500 bucks and you get me 1,000 links on random guest blog sites or blog networks, stuff like that. Those are more going to be dinged as paid links. If it's local and relevant, you're always going to be fine. Oh, okay, great. Um, thank you so much for that question, Mark. Okay, let's see. I think we have another one from Kayla. She says, okay, we currently are closely connected to five charities that we donate to monthly, and none of them link back to us. We don't really do it for the publicity, per se, because we really want yep. to donate, and we've been working with them for several years. Is it appropriate to ask them to link back to us at this point, or should oh, we just seek out God. other opportunities? No, those are the absolute best ones. And I didn't even go into that because that's a whole other section. Due diligence of people that you've been working with for 10 or 15 years are your best link sources because they know from jump you didn't get into this for a link. You want to donate. You're not doing it for publicity. You were providing value before a link ever even entered the equation there. So... I would start with that. Anybody you know you've been working with, go through, do your due diligence, go through every single organization, make sure you're getting a link on their website. And it is in no way rude. And just say, hey, you know, we're 
sign of the times here. We've got to ask for these links. It's important to our overall efforts. And just in case, you know, somebody wants to get over to our website and they know that we've donated here, we'd like the link. That's all. So, no, those are great. Hit those guys up immediately. Hit first. them up. Okay, Kayla wrote in, thanks. Perfect answer. All right, and Stephanie wrote in, yes, 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 amen. All you got to do is ask. All right, I think we are coming down to uh, the last few things we got to do here. Okay, um, gosh, I have so many comments in here. Mm, oh, John wrote in, if we can only afford one resource, what would it be? Would your first choice be Moz? Yeah, that's the easiest to digest for not necessarily novice users, but just anybody. It's a very approachable platform. Majestic is really in depth. I like it a lot. But I would say if you're if you're a local SEO that's listening, or if you're a professional link builder, lean on all three. Lean on Moz, Majestic, and Ahrefs. Car dealer, go with Moz. Okay, and uh, I think I think I've gotten everyone's. Um, AJ wrote in plus using the course page links to an internal page. Love it. I don't know what that means. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, when they're going to the service station, don't point that to campbrockman.com. It's got to go to campbrockman.com forward slash service or something like that. So a more internal page that isn't going to get the bulk of the links because when people are writing articles about you, when people are just mentioning your dealership, they're going to default by just linking to the .com, just the root domain. They're not going to build links to internal pages. That's where link builders have to come in and just say, oh, hey, remember when you said you were going to Camp Rockman Service Center on the course syllabus thing there? Put that to the service center instead next semester when you guys implement that thing. That would be much better for us. We need to build a few pages, you know, build a few links to those internal pages as well. So, yes, AJ's right on there. Oh, great. I just noticed that you had this auto hook slide up this entire time we were answering questions. Oh, you should I? have had it Look on the that. next slide so people had your contact information. All right. Contact so me. I think that it has come become uh, – plainly apparent to everyone on here that yes, Steve Shackelford is smarter than all of us. So <laughs> if you have questions about no. anything having to do with SEO, local link building, and yeah, I'm going to see how soon I can get him back on the show so we can talk about content. Um, yep. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, so uh, hey, his phone number's there, his email address. He is, as you can tell, the super coolest guy like on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so don't hesitate to to uh, reach out to him and see if he might be able to help you. Also, when we go to some of these big conventions, Steve's also usually in tow. So uh, stop by our booth whenever you can and talk to him in person. He's even nicer in person if that's at all possible, and I know from personal experience. So Steve Shackelford, right. thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you on my show again. I love you, and I do need my a better pleasure. headshot one doesn't look like you anymore. <laughs> uh, it's going back out. It'll be there soon. I'm telling you. It's going. It's going. All right. All right, baby. Thank you so much. You're such an awesome guy. All right. So I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Hey, hey, hey. feel free to share with your friends and colleagues because it was awesome. And today's webinar will also be posted online within 24 hours. So go to dealeron.com slash webinars to view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. And yes, when this webinar concludes in just another moment, you're going to get a short survey. It is so short. Seriously, it is three questions. You can handle it, people. Three questions. So fill it out because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer on webinar. Again, another subject that we have never touched, and it's going to be the first time we're doing it here next Thursday. How to move more metal with predictive analytics. I know, I didn't know that was a thing either, but just in case you hadn't heard, predictive analytics, yes, yeah, the hottest thing in the automotive industry right now. When car buyers kick the tires on your website, every online action drops hints on what car they'll eventually buy. Steve, you can go to the next slide if you'd like. Gathering and measuring the oh, right bad. analytics will allow you to more accurately predict which cars will sell in the next few days and which are going to probably sit on your lot for a little while. Simply put, predictive analytics helps dealers sell more cars 
faster and more profitably. In this fascinating one-hour webinar, predictive analytics expert Noah John will provide an essential comprehensive step-by-step -step walkthrough for anyone who wants to know which cars in their inventory have a strong likelihood to sell and which cars don't. He will share an example, an actual example of how to predict your inventory car sales using your Google Analytics account and a little math. Attendees of this jam-packed presentation will also learn how to supercharge your Google Analytics to capture 30 to 40 times more valuable action from online customers and how to create a simple mathematical model that predicts car sales using Google Analytics data. So buckle up people, the future is now. If you're ready to learn how to move more metal with predictive analytics, you can't afford to miss this presentation, so register now. Don't forget, Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, hey, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. My name is Eliana Raggio, and you can find me everywhere online. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in Dealeron's continuing education series. Take care, everyone. <laughs>